welcome to another Maurice video. This time it is between the British and the French, a traditional grudge match. The French played by Tom and me playing the British. Uh, the two armies are 100 points each. Let me take you through the two up. The British have gone for quantity. They have one national advantage, which is rally to the colors. Uh, the rest, they are infantry heavy with 12 infantry units and four cavalry units. Uh, the cavalry are trained. Uh, there is one elite infantry uh, and five conscript infantry bulk out the force. So a total of 16 army morale with no artillery. The British national advantage is rally to the colors. That enables any uh, uh, regular unit that fails a rally roll to re-roll the rally. So that means Britain will be very, very efficient at cleaning up their disruptions and bouncing back with strong units. French have a very romantic army. Uh, they have got uh, one elite guard cavalry and two elite guard infantry. Uh, quality, not quantity, four trained infantry, a uh, couple of irregulars and irregulars, but what makes them unusual is six artillery. So having to invest a lot in those six artillery because the points cost goes up as you buy more. Four is pretty efficient, six, and we'll see uh, they are, at, are costing the same as an infantry unit each by the end of that uh, quantity. The French have bought the uh, advan national advantage of professional train. That will enable their artillery to be much more maneuverable uh, uh, and to be able to move when you march it instead of requiring two activations. we draw for a terrain and this fight occurs in the plains uh, so there are two each of the, each type of terrain two woods two plowed fields two built up areas two marshes two possible hills uh, the scouting ad uh, advantage is for uh, dependent on how many cavalry in each army the French have five the English British have four, so the French have scouting advantage, uh, win the scouting role, and choose to defend in the plains. So the British Army adds one extra regular infantry unit to their force as the attacker. Terrain was placed alternatively by both sides. Uh, the French set up both of the built-up areas with the one in the center of their deployment uh, as being the one that the British will have to pick as their objective in the game. They set up a hill next door to it uh, for their huge artillery park. Uh, the uh, British placed a difficult field right behind the built-up area to uh, make it harder for the French to move troops from flank to flank. Their battle plan is to pick on one of the two halves of the French force and ignore the other. And that will make it harder for the unengaged French flank to reinforce the uh, engaged flank. 
There is a wood uh, that you can see Tom uh, positioning. That's where he, uh, he can put his irregulars uh, to uh, hold the line against the regulars. Uh, there is a couple of marshes disrupting the approaches to the French line, a hill, and uh, uh, the rest of the terrain will not make an appearance. So the French are on the far side and the British are attacking from the near side. Here you can see the French set up in all their glory. They have a very impressive grand battery of six cannon uh, set up on the hill and they are screened with uh, two regular infantry units in front. Uh, the French guards are echeloned slightly back, uh, protecting the flank, and the two units of regular cavalry are behind them to deter any outflanking moves. This is the French setup on their left flank. All their irregulars have gone into the wood, uh, so two Hussar cavalry units behind, and their light infantry chasseurs uh, in front. Uh, there are then re regular line units uh, holding the gap between the built-up area and the wood, with their elite cavalry tucked in behind. After this picture was taken, realized that hadn't garrisoned the objective built-up area, so uh, one of the regular units was placed into the town, and the guard was brought forward in order to have a solid line uh, next to the town. So overall the French have a strong defensive position, but their numbers are very light compared to the British because of how much they have invested in their artillery. With so much investment, the artillery really has to be a game winner uh, to make it worth it. The British set up, their big decision is whether they attack the left flank of the French line or the right flank. As you see here, they have weighted their left. So they put all their infantry on the left, going to uh, uh, attack the French on the hill. And their uh, cavalry, they have deployed extending the line on their right wing to deter any French from advancing in that area. Both these armies are made up from the uh, Old Glory figures. Uh, the starter sets is excellent value uh, for Seven Years' War, and they are pretty easy to paint up and look quite striking, especially when you add uh, some colorful flags. The first British turn, and the whole line moves forward of the regular infantry. Uh, they want to get to grips with the French and start the firefight as soon as possible. The French, in their turn, choose to bombard. They uh, have uh, six uh, artillery units, and because their guns are on a hill, they can fire over the heads of the units in front. That is a special rule that we agreed. Uh, they do five hits, but fortunately the British roll well for disruptions and only lose, uh, get one disruption on their front leading regiment. Here you can also see Tom's dice tray, the excellent uh, picture of Maurice used to inspire the French dice. The French line looks strong. Uh, the British will take some hits on their way in. That could even up the firefight. And the end of the British turn and the uh, troops have reached volley range. So an extra hit has been taken on the leading British regiment from the artillery bombardment fire, but that has not stopped them pressing forwards. And they are now in volley range of the French. The British have four units able to fire against the French three units. Uh, and each of them has one elite, and the British will be able to volley. 
so they should be have the advantage unless the French are able to do lots of bombard actions and uh, uh, then bring their guns to bear uh, to even up the firefight and tip it in the French advantage. But if they're doing the bombard action, they won't be able to rally. French volley phase across the line and they've inflicted a couple of hits, one on the elite British regiment and the other on the one that has been receiving a lot of fire. So they now have three hits against them. The French gunners have got dense British lines in their fight. All they need is the order to bombard. In the British turn, the uh, troop rallies up because it has the national advantage rally to the colours, they are very effective at removing disruptions and uh, the line is down to only one disruption on the British regiment. The disruptions on the French are creeping up uh, due to the British fire. The French return fire and the disruptions start creeping up on the British line again. The significant one is when you reach two disruptions because then your firing is less effective. You hit on fives or sixes instead of four fives or sixes. So it represents a one third reduction in your firepower if you have suffered two disruptions. Here you can see the overview of the firefight. The French uh, have sustained a few more hits. In particular, the guard have three disruptions and that puts the French player in a tough choice. If he doesn't rally, then that unit might be destroyed. Uh, however, if he rallies, then he will be unable to bombard with his guns and unable to march to bring his cavalry out to threaten the British line. Tough decisions are uh, the essence of Maurice because your commander can only do one thing each turn. The French commander realizes that he cannot let the British rally. So his line regiment, fully rallied, spots the weakened uh, British regiment in front of them and declares a charge. As they charge forward, they bring the grenadiers forward, playing a card that will give them plus two. So in this melee, the French are on a base six, plus two and eight and the English are on a six, minus two for their disruptions, a four. So it is an eight for the French to only four for the British. And the British roll a one. The French only roll a three, but with their grenadiers forward, that is a total of 11 to the British five, which is double, which is enough to rout the British regiment. So the French, charge forwards and destroy the British regiment in front of them. The British roll a six for uh, the impact on the army morale, which since this is a regular unit, uh, equates to a morale loss of three. So their army morale drops to 13 from 16. First blood to the French. The French picked up one disruption for their successful charge, but then they face the full fury of the British second line. There are eight units firing on them, and they achieve a great result of uh, uh, achieving four hits on the French line. Four hits plus the one they already have takes the French to their breaking point. So they charged forwards, but then were blasted away by two regiments of British firepower and head back home. The French started on 15 for their strength. They also roll high, so they lose three army points. They are now down to a 12, so 12 to 13. British player uh, wants to keep the pressure of the attack up, but his front uh, uh, unit has suffered three disruptions, so is uh, likely to be destroyed if he doesn't rally it. 
but fortunately he has a passage of the lines card. That enables the British second line to move through their disruptive friends in the front in order to shield them from future fire so that the British can replace the front unit without disruptions and the rear unit will be able to rally later. So here you see the Highlanders, a conscript unit, have been able to come through the uh, regulars with three disruptions and shield them from the fire. The elite guard have moved forward face-to-face -face, point blank range against the French foot guards and that's created the room for the uh, another British regiment to sweep out to the left in order to avoid uh, in order to get some extra firepower going on to the French cavalry. There is one British regiment stranded in the difficult. That's a learning from this game. You move a unit into there and it can no longer count as a force with the rest of the army. And when you're stuck for actions, then you're never likely to move it again. So don't move a single unit into difficult uh, uh, when you are under action pressure. And on the other end of the line, the British pile on the pressure, uh, wheeling a, another infantry unit uh, into uh, range of the French line and uh, uh, bringing the French guards on the right under fire as well. The French have a challenge which is uh, they need to rally to keep their units healthy. However, if they rally, they are not able to march to improve their position or bombard from their cannon. And uh, that means that they can't improve their position. So the British will grind them down. It's not pretty. It's not clever tactics from the British but it is brutally effective given their numbers. The French units are taking a lot of fire, uh, but the French plays a show no fear card and that uh, uh, makes the rallies more effective and uh, it enables both French units to fully rally up uh, and the British have to start from scratch again. It's a bit disheartening when you've put in all that work and the French are back strong again. However, there's only so many rally cards in the uh, pack and while the French are rallying, they're not doing anything more dangerous and the British still have uh, concentrated firepower on their French line. So uh, eventually the French will run out of rally cards and those units will go. Here we see the British regiment stranded in the difficult because they uh, uh, cannot uh, march with the rest of the force and the British uh, is using every action to try to get his main line in so these guys are stranded. French rallying every opportunity they can to keep their regiments in the fight However, you see the leading regiment is uh, tottering. Uh, it's always up at uh, three or four rallies, and so one good firefight will push them over the edge. The British now have 10 uh, stands that are able to bear on the French, and uh, it's nice to roll a big handful of dice in Maurice. And the hits are on four fives and sixes. So here we can see six hits getting stacked up on that French unit. It tries to rally them. But it receives one disruption too many and, and that takes it up to five and that French unit runs having taken a lot of punishment from the British firepower. British are careful to stay out of canister range of the French guns. We've never had a attack on uh, uh, frontally on guns. Uh, the Highlanders are not sure they want to try that. It's quite useful to have a couple of tools for Maurice, particularly uh, since 
all the bases uh, of a regiment is 12 centimeters long. So if you've got a 12 centimeter stick, it's very useful for calculating wheels. Here you can see the uh, regiment that uh, is going round the flank, uh, wheeling its maximum distance to bring its firepower to bear on the French cavalry. And here you can see the overall battlefield, the British pressing their attack on the left. They want to drive off the French cavalry and then take the French artillery from the flank. Uh, they are staying outside canister range of the guns uh, and they are uh, lining up uh, to defend the flank in case the French infantry uh, uh, on the French left flank uh, wants to engage. The British have no plans to attack the town that they are looking to break the French army rather than storm the objective. In Maurice, storming towns is very, very hard. It's much easier to win by breaking the enemy army. The Highlanders are contemptuous of the French artillery. The French artillery continues to uh, bombard them, but doing no damage. The firefight continues. Uh, with each side trying to get an advantage. The uh, uh, deadly fire makes the British more effective. They are looking to try to break the French guards with one uh, uh, volley phase, but the French player uh, counters by playing the thick smoke card to uh, uh, remove the advantage of deadly fire. However, the volley phase is good enough to reduce the French guard to four disruptions. They only need one more for them to rout, and that is going to be provided by the Highlanders, who charge in on the French guard. Their sister unit goes up in support to uh, try to uh, counter the uh, French guns. The French guard fights hard. It plays a card that puts its strength back up to eight and damages the uh, Highlanders. Uh, and that is enough to, for the French to win the combat, inflicting two hits on the Highlanders. However, they still take their one hit automatically from being engaged in melee, which pushes them to breaking point. The next firefight phase is critical because the Highlanders are lined up facing the full fury of the French at artillery at canister range. So the British player pays a first fire in order to try to disrupt as many artillery as possible with his firepower uh, to reduce the damage to the Highlanders. However, the French person, general has uh, another thick smoke card, so he plays that, reducing the effectiveness of the Highlanders' fire. Because of that, the Highlanders are only able to inflict uh, one disruption on the French uh, artillery and have to face the fury of the remaining guns at full strength. The French is rolling 12 dice uh, for the uh, uh, artillery because they're at canister range. And if you see here, that he has rolled six hits on the conscript Highlander unit. The Highlanders only save on a one or a two. And from those six hits, they uh, suffer four disruptions. So the uh, conscript Highlanders have been pushed to the point of uh, routing with one massive volley from the French guns. Seeing the weakened units in front of them as a result of the French artillery fire, the cavalry decide it is their moment to shine. So both units charge forwards uh, and uh, one engages the British elite uh, grenadier regiment that already has two hits on it. The other engages the Highlanders with three hits on them already. 
the cavalry charging the uh, British Grenadiers bounces. Uh, the Grenadiers are still a tough target even with two disruptions and uh, inf gain a victory against the French. And they are fighting a full strength cavalry unit of strength six. So six to one and a good dice roll is not enough to make a difference. The uh, Highlanders are destroyed by the French charge. A lot of firepower uh, threatening the French units. Uh, this is the strength of having a second line. The French artillery rolls a volley uh, phase canister blast against the other Highland unit and blows it away. Well, the Highlanders have learnt that bombardment range is no uh, concerns, but canister range is a recipe to get quickly destroyed by an artillery battery. Three, three hits to the mar army morale are rolled by both of the Highlander units, uh, so that is a total to six reduction in the uh, British morale. Uh, so they are now down to a 7. The attack might be faltering. However, the British counterfire manages to destroy one of the French cavalry units, and uh, this pushes the French army morale down to a 5, so uh, keeping the pressure on. The British wheel round to try to attack the flank of the French artillery. Uh, the final French cavalry unit is looking in bad shape as it, the French player cannot save the act, uh, spend the actions to uh, pull it out. You can see three of the French batteries were disrupted by Highlander fire, but it wasn't enough to save them. British infantry are now careful to stay out of canister range from the French. Uh, the French uh, national advantage of having mobile guns is now seen as the French player is able to rotate his uh, and wheel his entire line of artillery to bring it to bear on the British and make it much harder for uh, the British to flank his position. You see the French final cavalry unit has now been blown away, leaving the French on three morale points. The British has been engaging in an extended fire fight with the French guard next to the Tau. Uh, they have uh, stood up very well to the fire, dishing out as much as they receive. The British do need to keep rallying here. Fortunately, the British can play the coordination card so they can rally here while still marching their other force around the French flank. The French plays Death of a Hero. One of their sharpshooters takes out uh, one of the British generals and uh, it is a one hit to morale. So it is now British 6 and uh, French 3. British need to work out how they are going to get their last three points to break the French army. The artillery go down easy, uh, but not if they are attacked frontally, so the British has to manoeuvre round to the side. The French player considers activating his uh, flank, however he is a long way away from the commander-in-chief and the Commander-in-Chief needs to be close to command the artillery. Here you can see the effect of British rallies to leave most of the front line with very few disruptions. Another coordinate card enables the British to keep moving round the flank of the French artillery while, and they are now in charge range on the flank while rallying the front line. The French player uses the mobility of his artillery to full advantage, pulling them back once again outside charge range and uh, presenting a solid line against the British advance. 
After what happened to the Highlanders, the British are reluctant to throw their men away by uh, launching an attack into the face of the French guns. However, now they are behind the hill, so the British might be able to come up uh, shielded by the hill and uh, get into charge without taking damage. But the British have another trick up their sleeve. They play the heat of battle and the French guard uh, get uh, overwhelmed by the amount of time that they have been sitting engaging in a firefight and they charge forwards to uh, sweep away the pesky British. So they charge forwards and hit the British line. Uh, they have a strength of eight with three disruptions down to a uh, five. The British are on a six since they have no casualties. If the French lose, then they will take two hits, taking their disruption to five, and they will be routed and the game over. However, against the odds, they manage to win and they beat the British. The British take two disruptions and the French only one, leaving them on a four. The British need to get lucky on their shooting since they are now suffered two disruptions. So they uh, roll four dice, they manage to get two hits, and one of them converts to a disruption on the French guard. So the French guard have now reached five disruptions and rout. The army morale is rolled and it's a three. So the French morale drops to zero, having seen the guard recul and the whole army withdraws. Many thanks to Tom for a fantastic game and uh, it shows the Maurice rules. They can be a little bit attritional. Uh, the firefight is uh, uh, where the action is and your general only has a few cards to influence it when you are in the middle of a fight. It's also uh, tough decision on when you rally, when you march to try to improve your position, uh, or when you use, for the French, the bombardment to use uh, their artillery advantage. So a great set of rules, and this was a fun game. Look forward to seeing you on the next Maurice fight.